Today I'm going to talk about marketing, but specifically marketing gone wrong. If you've heard of any of these situations, you probably wondered who handles these multinational companies' translations. Like, they've got all this money, but apparently none for a decent translator. It's like they found someone's nephew with a Duolingo account and said, Here, you're in charge of our global brand now. Take Pepsi, for example. They had this slogan, Come alive with the Pepsi generation. In Chinese, that ended up translating to, Pepsi brings your ancestors back from the dead. So now, instead of a refreshing soda, we've got a can of Pepsi Necromancer. Just crack one open at a family reunion and watch Grandpa crawl out of the ground like, Finally, someone brought the Pepsi! Or how about Coors? Their slogan was, Turn it loose. You know, like, relax, have a beer, live a little. But in Spanish, it translated to, Suffer from diarrhea. I don't know about you, but that's not the kind of looseness I'm looking for in a cold one. That's a hard pass. Imagine going to a party and someone hands you a beer and it says, Suffer diarrhea on the side. And you're like, nah, I'm good. I'd prefer not to turn it that loose tonight. <clears throat> then there's KFC. They had their famous slogan, finger licking good, right? But when they launched in China, that somehow became, eat your fingers off. What are they serving over there, chicken wings or human appendages? This turns KFC into some post-apocalyptic buffet. Walk in, and it's not just the chicken that's extra crispy. How about one from a company you probably never heard of? Parker Pens. Their slogan was, it won't leak in your pocket and embarrass you. Good, right? Simple, practical. But in Mexico, it became, it won't leak in your pocket and make you pregnant. What the hell kind of pen is this, Parker? I didn't realize I was buying writing instruments with bonus features. People are out here trying to write a grocery list and accidentally starting a family. Even Electrolux, the Swedish vacuum cleaner company, tried their hand in the U.S. with the slogan, Nothing sucks like an Electrolux, which is true because it's a vacuum. But in American slang, that slogan is basically saying, This vacuum cleaner is terrible. It's like they weren't even trying. It's almost as if the marketing team threw in the towel and said, Yeah, it sucks, but buy it anyway. Another one of my favorites is GM's Chevy Nova. They tried to sell this car in Latin America, but guess what? In Spanish, Nova means it doesn't go. They're out here trying to push a car that proudly claims it won't run. That's not just a translation fail, that's a prophetic warning. Speaking of which, then there's Ford. Back in the day, they tried to sell their Pinto in Brazil. Now, they didn't do their homework because in Brazilian Portuguese, Pinto is slang for small male genitals. Yeah, that's right. They were trying to sell a car named Ford Little Penis. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm in the market for a car, that's not really the message I'm looking for on the hood. Hey bro, check out my ride. Yeah, sorry, no one wants to take a spin in your Pinto. How about Clairol? They came out with this hair product called Mist Stick. Sounds innocent enough, right? Well, when they launched it in Germany, no one was rushing to buy it. Turns out mist in German translates to manure. So what they were really selling was a manure stick. Yeah, nothing says luscious, healthy hair like slathering a fresh pile of manure onto your scalp. Hey girl, what's your secret? Is that cow shit? And let's talk about Gerber. We all know their baby food with that cute little baby on the jar. But when they started selling in Africa, there was just one small issue. See, in some African countries, product labels typically show pictures of what's inside the package. So when people saw a baby on the jar, they thought, wait, are they selling baby food or food made from babies? That's a whole new level of organic farm-to-table horror right there. I'm saying this wrong, but even Schweppes couldn't escape the translation madness. They launched their Schweppes tonic water in Italy, but due to some translation misstep, it ended up being marketed as Schweppes toilet water. Now, I've heard of products refreshing your senses, but no one's out here looking to down a glass of toilet-flavored sparkling refreshment. Mmm, tastes like porcelain. Oh, and here's a classic, Coors Light, one of our most well-known beers with the slogan, Tap the Rockies. Well, when they took that over to Spain, someone got a little too creative and it became get intoxicated in Spanish. Which, I mean, yeah, that's basically what you're doing with Coors, but it's not exactly the most wholesome message. 
Like, forget the mountains, let's just get hammered. Then, finally, there's the American Dairy Association. Their slogan, Got Milk, was a huge hit in the U.S., so naturally, they thought it would work great in Mexico, too. Only in Spanish, it somehow translated to, Are you lactating? Not exactly something you want to ask your customers. I mean, I drink a lot of milk, but I don't need strangers questioning my personal dairy production. Well, that's all I've got, but I would really appreciate it if you share any other examples you can find in the algorithm. I mean, in the comments. The amount of marketing fails out there is truly staggering. It's like these companies just throw translations into Google and hope for the best. But hey, it gives us endless comedy, so who's really losing here?